Hi, it's Monty from Sporty Cyclist, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Day Saver 9 Function Multi Tool, and I bought it on Kickstarter way back, I think, in September 2020. It finally arrived in April, and I finally got around to taking a look at it. Now, this is not a review. I repeat, this is not a review. I haven't used it properly in anger, so I guess this is my first impressions. And also, just to get it out of the way, because no doubt I've mentioned it in the title, yes, this is a pretty expensive multi-tool. It's not very big, and the cost, I think, was checks. Notes, 95 Swiss francs for the holder and the multi-tool. I'll let you Google find out how much that is and move on with the video. Safe to say it is quite a lot. Now, if you are new here and you like cycling, road cycling, you like lycra, you like mammals, you are a mammal, then please do consider subscribing to this channel and let's get into the video. Okay, so this is the day saver and it's intended to be a lighter weight and slightly more sleek alternative to your standard bike multi-tool. It was designed, conceived by a small number, maybe two or three young Swiss men who decided to launch their idea on Kickstarter and have partnered with the Swiss tool manufacturer PB Tools in order to make the thing. They reached out to me just before the launch of their Kickstarter campaign. It seems I ignored that email, but I did go on when the Kickstarter launched and actually purchase one of these multi-tools. How it works, so you have a handle here, a standard l shape handle, and then within it we have four magnetic bits, which through various slotting together combinations allow you to fulfill nine different bike-related tool jobs. So the handle itself is a size 8 hex key, or allen key, as we call them here in the UK. Then as we move into the bits, We've got various sizes of smaller hex keys, Allen keys. I think we've got a two, two and a half, a three, a four, a five, and a six. We've also got a Torx 25 size bit here. And finally, we have a size one Phillips or cross screwdriver head here. And the idea is that we can slot into either end of the handle here any of these bits in order to create the required tool. The good thing about having both ends is that you can both use it like this and get into smaller spaces. Alternatively, if you need higher leverage, you can obviously use the slightly longer handle bit end here in order to exert more force. Physics. The other clever thing about how this tool works is that each of these bits slots into another one and then slots into the handle in order to be carried around so you don't lose them. So, for instance, this little one here slots into there and then can be either slotted directly into there and is hidden away in there, which makes it extra safe for when you're carrying it around. Alternatively, slide it out, slide it in the other way, and that's the bit here. Similarly, the Phillips end here can go into the back of this piece here, which I think is our size 6 Allen key, hex key, and again it can slot into here for safe keeping when you're out and about whether that's in your jersey pocket or in the tool holder, which I'll come to in a minute. A few more interesting things to say about these bits. They are what's known as plasma coated, which apparently means they are less susceptible to corrosion. As you can see, they're a slightly different color to the silvery handle. You've got your slightly purplish color here and your slightly goldish color here. That means that these two go together and these two go together. You can't combine this one, say, with this one, it don't work. So the color coding helps identify which bit goes with which. There's also some handy inscriptions. If you've got good eyesight, you can see, I'm not sure if you can or not, two and a half, three on this one. Not sure why I picked the smallest bit to demonstrate the inscriptions. 25 showing the Torx head here, six for this hex end here. I mentioned that they're magnetic. I also mentioned the way that you can handily store one within the other, a bit like a Russian doll thingamajig. Is it a Russian doll? And then enveloped 
within the handle and that means you're less likely to use a valuable bit when you're out on a ride. Now during the Kickstarter period, the Day Saver makers ran a poll in order to decide the ninth tool that would be built into the Day Saver. As a result of that, I think the decision was made to add the two and a half size hex key, which I must admit, I can't remember the last time I've had need to use, but it must be a popular one with cyclists one imagines. Now, the one thing that they did say as part of that for the unsuccessful bits was that I think the size four hex key can at a push, where is the size four hex key? Oh, here it is on the end of the Phillips driver here. The size four hex key can apparently be used in order to act as a way of adding additional micro bits onto the end to add further usability to the day saver. Now I would say that you're unlikely to happen upon an additional micro bit in your backpack. Backpack? Who has a backpack? Your saddlebag or your jersey pocket, but still it's a nice to know fact. Onwards. Finally, also during the Kickstarter, you were able to select whether or not you wanted the Phillips head screwdriver or the flat headed screwdriver. I went for the Phillips head screwdriver. Now, if you want to buy this on the Daysaver website, it's only the Phillips end screwdriver, which makes me think no one wants a flat headed screwdriver on a bike ride. So let's compare the day saver to my regular bike multi-tool, which because of its size and its weight, I tend to keep in the pocket in my saddlebag. Here we have the Crank Brothers 19 multi-tool. I've owned it for years, must be getting on for nearly 10 years, which at least shows that this has a good longevity. It is undeniably the case that this tool is significantly heavier and bulkier than the day saver. In fact, whilst we're talking weight, I've got my kitchen scales. Supposedly the day saver is 45 grams. Well, 39 grams. I'm not sure if these are accurate scales, but they're accurate with one another. Let's try that again. 39. We've saved six grams. Compare that to 178 for the Crank Brothers tool. Doing some quick maths, that's an extra 140 grams approximately by carrying the Crank Brothers multi-tool versus the Day Saver. Now obviously, even though it's significantly heavier, you are getting many more tools with the Crank Brothers and it offers much more flexibility. You've got tools to work on your chain, on your wheel, and there are much more in terms of hex keys and screwdriver ends and what have you. But when it comes to using those tools, none of them are particularly ideal. If we compare trying to screw something in with a hex key like this one versus trying to tighten something like this, this can get into a much narrower space. You can also exert more force doing this. This one is pretty unwieldy and I will accept the makers of the day savers claim that this is much more likely to cause you to scratch or otherwise damage your frame. That said, with a multi-tool, often people do like a multitude of tools on their multi-tool in order to get them out of a jam. This is not gonna get you out of a jam if your chain breaks and you're unable to repair it. Just a comment in terms of, I suppose, the damage that having a multi-tool can have. I don't have a jersey to hand to show you what damage that could do, but we can see I've had this in my saddle bag for a number of years. I've kept it in this particular pocket here. We can see there's holes in the mesh here and here and rubbing on the back here. Now, one of the selling points of the day saver is that it's not gonna cause quite that same level of damage. And in fact, as part of what they supply, we do get two rubber ends that go on the end here and here. So if you're gonna be storing this in your jersey pocket in particular, then it's not gonna cause that same level of risk of damage. It's also gonna keep the bits definitely in so you don't lose them. Okay, I suppose the downside though of these robbery end pieces, it does rather take away from the industrial beauty and cleanness of line that the day saver has. It doesn't look quite as premium when you have these rubber end bits on. But you don't have to keep the day saver in your jersey pocket or in your saddlebag if you don't want. There's an alternative solution. I have invested in the dedicated frame mount, which is quite cool because it's in fact 
3D printed. I don't think I've seen anything that has been 3D, 3D, 3D printed. So that's quite nice. It's made out of a sort of plasticky material. Maybe that's what all 3D printed things are. If we look at it here, it obviously bolts onto a standard bottle cage mounting point using these holes here and here. So how does it work? You slot that in there and then you push it into its clip and it's securely held. You will note there is insufficient space for those rubbery end caps. Those are for when it's in your jersey pocket. But the design of the mount is such that it definitely holds in the bit that is here. That's going to stop that sliding out. And then similarly on the other end, this bit here is also going to keep that nice and safe if you're on something of a jiggly road surface. Now we're going to get meta and we're going to use this tool in order to fit this to the bike. Let's go! Right. Maybe we should try our multi-tool. Size three. I mean, we're already struggling to work out which is size three. To the point where we have to compare it. That's the size three. Definitely already a bit of a pain. That's sort of getting in the way. You see the problem with it slightly bending. Compare that with this. It slots in reasonably well. And it's small. It actually goes in quite neatly. Obviously, I'm not going to tighten this super tight, but if it was one that required a bit more torque, I could have swapped the bits and finished it off that way. Now, just to say that the literature talks about the fact that adding in these spacers that hold the bottle cage off the mount adds an additional 12 and a half millimeters. So if space is at a premium here within the frame of your bike, you just need to be aware of that just to make sure that you can fit in a bottle having made this adjustment here. Let's see in terms of slotting this in here. Fixed securely in its mount. It's not hugely obvious if I pan back. We've got a bike tool underneath our bottle cage. I think that's quite a neat solution. So I'll probably keep that fixed there, try it out on multiple rides, see how I get on, and if I have a particular problem with it, or it's particularly good, particularly useful, I will report back and let you know. So my first impressions of the Daysaver multi-tool are very positive. It seems well made, it seems useful. I've really enjoyed just using it now in order to fix the mount to the bike. It has a satisfying clunk when it goes into the mount. I've got no doubt if and when I need any of these bit ends, this will be quite a pleasant tool to use in order to fix whatever has gone wrong on the bike. But, but the main thing that stands out about this multi-tool is the price. If you look at just the tool itself, I think it costs 79 Swiss francs, which converted to sterling is 62 pounds. You buy it as a bundle with a mount, which I recommend that you do. It goes up to 95 Swiss francs, which is about 74 pounds, 88 dollars. This is not a cheap multi-tool. If we compare it to the Crank Brothers multi-tool here, did I mention it's got 19 versus nine functions like this one, 19 functions, yet this one will set you back about 30 pounds, which I imagine is about $35. If I go onto the Wiggle website, even the most expensive multi-tool, which generally means it has more functions, will only set you back between 40, 45 pounds, around about 50, maybe 55, 60 dollars. It's a significant leap up in order to buy the Daysaver and you're getting fewer 
functions when you do so. There'll be some people that will value the overall premium nature of this product, the fact that it's Swiss manufactured, made by a premium Swiss tool manufacturer. It's definitely high quality. I don't think you'll be let down in terms of its performance. There will be some as well that will be swayed by the opportunity to save 140 grams versus a standard multi-tool. But for watchers of this channel, if you are a mammal, the likelihood is that you've got 140 grams that you could lose off your person, which would benefit you more from a performance perspective than simply making the saving via buying a more expensive multi-tool. Long-term viewers of this channel, readers of my blog, will know that I'm a Yorkshireman with deep pockets short arms. Would I have bought the Day Saver multi-tool at this price if I didn't also have a YouTube channel where I could make a video about it and offset some of the cost? The short answer is probably not. It's a really good tool. I'm very happy that I bought it. I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it, but £75 for a multi-tool that has nine functions? Oof. oof. So I hope you enjoyed this video, an introduction to the Day Saver, the most expensive bike multi-tool I've ever purchased. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more road cycling content from the perspective of an enthusiastic but underperforming road cycling mammal, then please do hit the subscribe button. I've been Monty, this is Sporty Cyclist, the mammal channel, and I will see you in the next video. I'm off to plasma coat my legs. <sighs>